I myself am a comedian. I have worked uh, as a professional stand-up comic for about a year, which is not a long time, granted. Um, but I have done paid gigs. I've done paid shows. I have worked as a host at a comedy club uh, for traveling comedians. Uh, like, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm like a big name, but I've done, I, I am familiar with stand-up comedy. I'm familiar with how it works. I can put together a good joke. I can put together a set. I have a couple sets. So when it comes to comedy, I do know what I'm talking about. I don't claim to be a master because I don't think there's like outside of a very few limited number of people, nobody's really a master of it. But I do have a familiarity with stand-up comedy, how it's properly performed, uh, and probably most importantly when it comes to stand-up comedy, things like audience interaction, things like audience participation, things like knowing your audience. And these are all important because of how they play into conservative comedy, which is what we're going to talk about today. But anyway, enough preamble. Let's get right into... This cat is being so snuggly. I can't even believe you right now. You're being such an attention hog. Can, can you guys hear her purring? Come here. Did you guys hear that? No, it really is Turf City. Like, look at... You got, you got like, an assortment of Karen haircuts just dotting the front row already. <laughs> We're not on the show. Don't talk. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a lot of, um... That is... That's the J.K. Rowling fan club right there. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I just have to make sure it's always a turf crowd. Ah. So he said turf, and, and look, remember what I was just saying about Dave Landau and the people who showed out for him? The people, because Dave Landau didn't do a lot of political stuff, but he would still throw some bones. You know, he, he did a joke about um, uh, the, the cat litter in schools thing. And, and it was supposed to be this, like, super dark, offensive, edgy joke about, you know, a kid... Uh, killing themselves but not being able to because they had paws and how are they going to pull the trigger and it was just this shitty thing but the room ate it up ate it up and and he would do a joke about joe biden falling off a bike the room fucking went bananas ballistic i cannot explain to you like the the raucous noise a crowd of conservatives will make cheering for things that barely constitute jokes but will reaffirm their biases which is exactly what we're seeing here. Like, he, he didn't even make a joke. He just said, oh, I'm, I'm appealing to a crowd of turfs. And the room fucking goes bananas. No, 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 no. Or at least the front row goes bananas. Let's, 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 let's cut that short. Let's cut that short. So, uh, how's your month been? I'll tell you one thing. Rosanna Lockwood won't be talking about nonsense with Peter Tatchell sitting next to her every day. <laughs> What did I do? I still don't know what I've done wrong. Ba banned from the Edinburgh Festival and the Conservative Party Conference. If there were still DVDs, I'd be able to put on it. Too hot for the Edinburgh Fringe. And the Conservative Party Conference. Really? It's just... Coming out swinging talking about dvds by the way i i'm not sure what he did most recently but graham linhan is well known to be a childish shithead bigot who uh is maybe has divorced energy rivaled only i would say by elon musk no goresk was taken he has not you are you're not wrong he has not said a single joke uh not a single joke we are two minutes into this 13 minute clip Don't even laugh, Helen. <laughs> People would be like, oh, I only, oh, too hot for the Edinburgh Fringe. That must be pretty hot. And the Conservative Party Conference. Uh, so it's been a bit of an insane month. As you so he's, this is just ad-libbing so far. People have been very worried about me. Very thank you, know, thank you to anyone who's been expressing concern. I am okay. I am okay. I'm, 
I'm trying to, yeah, 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 yeah. Cooler Gary, thank you very much for the biddies. I appreciate it. Cat appreciates it too. Oh, thank you. That's, yeah, that's Shield Thaden, in, wants, is, he is, does not look okay. Out. We love you, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just make it another month. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking rough Le look if you are getting up on stage and it is not an open mic crowd there are people there ostensibly to see you the one thing you don't want is somebody from the crowd to yell tell us some jokes that's raw that that was somebody in the crowd, Lil Nido, who said, "Tell us some jokes," uh, interrupting him talking about. I, I he's kind of throwing a like a little bit of a pity party uh, for himself. That's yeah. I'll play that again real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, thank you. That's the, that's what a comedian wants is is people shouting out, "We love you. You're okay." <laughs> Just make it another month. Tell us some jokes. Oh God, jokes! I remember them. Uh, but uh, like, I, I am, I'm taking care of myself. Uh, and he just completely ignores it, steamrolls it, and continues on unabated. Wow. My version of a diet is uh, I order the same pizza I order every time, except just before it arrives, I make the mental note, be gentle with this one. <laughs> Don't fuck the pizza. <laughs> there you go. All the goodwill just leaking out <laughs> of the room as, as soon as I get onto my material. <laughs> like the Titanic hitting an iceberg. Uh, I go to the gym three times a week, bare minimum. Uh, I Graham. I know comedians are supposed to exaggerate from time to time. But generally, you want to tell a joke that sounds like it could be plausible. You understand? If you're going to lie... Which is fine, a lot of comedians do. You want to make it sound realistic. You're not off to a good start here. Uh, the good news is I'm giving up comedy. <laughs> no, 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 wait. Okay. I, I, let me explain the problem, right? If you were, the, the thing about comedy is I love it so much that um, I want to do it really well, you know? And to do it really well, you have to learn the craft. And for a stand-up comedian, that means going to clubs every night and doing it in front of different crowds, not just turfs who heard about it on uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You know, like doing it in front of people who actually hate you. That's kind of what you have to do, <laughs> you know? Okay, you know what? That's not bad. That's, that's okay. Like, he's still being weirdly self-pitying and self-deprecating, but he is, he is not wrong about the craft and what it takes to be a stand-up comedian. I'm very curious about where he's going to go with this, though. And, and my problem is, uh, I can't be arsed. <laughs> I'm 55 years old, and if I was, and basically, at the moment, I'm averaging a gig every two months. So if I want to get comfortable with this act, uh, I'll probably get there in my early 90s. <laughs> Also, other comedians, they look at me and they, they don't accept me. I can tell. They don't. No, they don't. They don't. They're like, did you ever see a goat hanging around with puppies? Here's the thing about comedians is that by and large, comedians are an incredibly accepting group in my experience. And, and I can't speak to this. I hope everybody heard that. Miss said hello. Um, by and large... Comedians are a very accepting group because they are usually pretty diverse. And even if a lot of the more white male comedians will make off-color jokes, will make jokes that might be kind of offensive, 
they still have a respect for pretty much anybody who can get up there, continue getting up there, grind out sets, continue coming back and honing their craft. And it creates a sense of community, even if somebody might be generally a little bit more conservative or a little bit more centrist, the amount of people who I would never expect to ask me my pronouns and how I like to be referred to has been mind blowing because that's a lot of comedians will meet you where you're at. A, a large part of comedy, good comedy is empathy and understanding because to make some fun of something correctly in a way that is broadly understandable, you have to understand it yourself. So if, if what he's saying is true, I'm not surprised that people would a know who he is. Other thing about uh, comedy in groups, if if people if a couple of people don't like you, especially if they're important in a scene, ain't nobody gonna like you. Like that's don't don't burn bridges. It kind of drew attention to how fucked comedy is at the moment. Yeah. It really did. You know, if you can't. Here we go. Remember remember everything I was saying earlier about how guys mostly white men of a certain age will get up on stage and be like, oh, you can't say anything these days without you did all this woke stuff. And, and here's the other thing. These are the things that actually piss me off. Like, because every fucking comedian has this in their set. Like, I, I cannot, as somebody who's seen dozens and dozens of traveling comedy acts, every traveling comedian, not everyone, there, there are a lot of good standouts, but for the most part, I'd say 90% of white male comedians. Like we are still s seven minutes out of 13 of this clip. He hasn't had a single punchline. He's told a couple like kind of jokes, like self-deprecating stuff. Haven't had a single punchline, have been heckled by the crowd, and we're already getting to the, the lowest common denominator of a setup with, we can't tell jokes anymore. You should try telling some first before you jump right there. Let's hear I, I already know what he's going to say, but let's hear it anyway. I had a gig at the Edinburgh Fringe. I read there were people saying, Graham Linehan is coming with his jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Helen, we're not on the fucking show. <laughs> Graham Linehan is coming with his jokes, you know? Uh, and, and things like, it just kind of made me think, you know what, this is insane. And I'm not really going to be able to learn the craft um, while I'm kind of uh, under this kind of bizarre pressure, you know? However, <laughs> however, I have good news. <laughs> and this is the perfect audience to announce it to. I've written a book. It's just a press anyone, junket. What the fuck? Anyone got an idea what the title might be? Thank you very much. Loresque was taken. You can't say. You know. No, I don't know. No, go on. No, not cancelled. Anyone else? Cuts. <laughs> you know what? There's still time to change it. One no, joke, I, if we're being was, generous, Clint Eastwood. Time. I was going to call it, and Father Ted fans will recognize this one. I was going to call it, and now we move on to liars. No, it's, it's called Tough Crowd. And it's uh, oh, about very uh, Father Ted and the IT crowd and writing all of them, and then about what happened in the last five years and all the madness and... Uh, Kind of explains my situation and uh, why I think the things that I do. So, um... no, you think the things that you do because you're divorced and miserable, and I'm gonna say, probably lost your touch with comedy. Like, like he kind of skipped over it, but what he's literally saying here is that he didn't want to go to rooms or venues that wouldn't be accepting to him. Like that's that's literally what he was admitting to, and he didn't. I, if he was trying to make a joke out of it, which there's a joke to be made there, he didn't do a good job of it. He kind of just said it like it was a thing that happened. Like, oh, that's not really a, a good crowd for me. Which is not, again, what you do. He kind of laid out a, like pretty good rules for startup stand-up comedians. 
is you go to any room you can. Because different rooms are going to play with different jokes. There's a there is a a gay nightclub that has an open mic on Tuesdays. It is literally like two blocks away from the downtown Spokane Comedy Club, which also has a mic on Tuesday. So if you're really hoofing it, which in a lot of big cities, go to go to any comedian, any open mic, there are always people who are hustling, busting their ass to get to multiple mics multiple times a week. But the the room in the gay comedy club, completely different reception to jokes. Doesn't matter what the jokes are about, completely different reception. So when I used to, to go between both of them, I would have a different set written for each thing. Like that's that's what comedians have to be prepared to do, which he's apparently not. It's a little, little going to go down hopefully a little bit better than just shouting, uh, you know, Groomer of people on Twitter. All right, let me. I'm gonna roll that back to see what I missed there. You know, groomer of people on and all the madness and uh, kind of explains my situation and uh, why I think the things that I do. So um, it's a little, little gonna go down. Hopefully, a little bit better than just shouting. Uh, you know, groomer of people on Twitter. <laughs> Because it's a tough, I, have, I do have a tough time. I went into um, town recently, and uh, I don't normally go into town because it's a bit of a fraught experience. When I say town, I mean Soho, because I used to be in the media. I used to be in the media, and that's what I think of as town, you know? So I had to go in, and it wasn't until I was already in that I realized it was pride. Not, not just the month, which seems to be still going on, but the holy day of pride. When Santa leaves dildos under your sex harness. <laughs> and the son of God was born to something or other. Wow. That was fucking... That, that was the first thing I could qualify as like a joke with a punchline and a setup. And the, the problem is the setup is like there is... If, if, you're t if he's talking about the day of like a pride parade... Starting off with the, the Holy Day of Pride, great fucking setup. Like, there is a bit to be mined there. He just goes with, like, goes off into an ad-libbed tangent that makes no sense whatsoever. Like, he's talking about Santa leaving dildos under your sex harness. Like, those, first off, none of those things are explicitly queer. Like, I, I get what he's trying to say, I think, I guess. But, like, you can easily swap those out with, with three things that would make it way funnier. Not, not a good joke, but would make way more sense. And then the second point, the reason I pause this, I gotta, I gotta roll that back. Because he literally lets the joke go halfway through it. Like, he forgets what he's fucking saying. If he, if he had something he was saying to begin with. And the Son of God was born to something or other. What is that? It's the actual day. And, oh my uh, God! It's very, very. It's a bit, it, like I'm a heterosexual man, so uh, 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 mass demonstrations of of joy. I, I don't like them in the anyway. <laughs> See, that but wasn't bad. Is particularly dangerous for me. Well, I don't want to. I don't, and I apologize to any Jewish people here, but it is a little bit like crossing occupied France while Jewish. I just keep, I just keep imagining being checked by someone. So you are out today? What are you doing in town? <laughs> oh, you know, I'm just, just picking up some, picking up some supplies, you know. <laughs> He's comparing himself to Jews in World War II and calling people in pride Nazis, basically. But... Like, obviously... Obviously. It's, it would be the other way around. You did not go to pride? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Do you not like pride? 
No, no, I'm an ally, I'm an ally. Yeah, no. Oh, yes, yes, I'll begin it and you sing, you sing the end, yes? And if you do not sing the end, well, maybe you'll get off the train with me and we'll have a further chat. Is he gonna sing? Is he actually gonna sing? Did he... It, it doesn't seem like he's prepared much of this. Like, a lot of this seems like he's winging it. Or he hasn't done it much before. Yes, yes. Oh, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. LGBTQ. <laughs> okay, again, there's something to that joke. Like, the idea that, like, I'll start it, you finish it with LGBTQ, and then what's the rest of it? Because only somebody who would know that. Like, there's something to that. But the way he's doing it, like, listen to the way the crowd reacts. It's just a fucking dog whistle. It's just, like, the most basic play. Also, he's lost the whole Nazi pretense at this point, even though he's still doing the accent. I, this is such a confused bit. Two A. Yes. Yeah, whooping and whistling from crowds of turfs, and the punchline of all that was basically LGBTQ 2ASS. The LGBT are Nazis. Wow. This was. John Chitters, you were right. This is cringe, but it's somehow even worse than I thought it would be because the jokes are next to non-existent. And he spent, like, the first half of it just talking about it himself, throwing a pity party, and then promoing a book before getting into just, like, man. So we have that. Let's clean our palate with something a little bit less modern. A little bit more old school, if you will. A uh, 12-year-old set from everybody's, one of everybody's favorite commentators. You know him, you love him, Steven Crowder. Uh, failed stand-up comedian who grifted his way to his space in, in the right wing. Where he's, he's basically losing his star now because he's burnt bridges with the people from Daily Wire. Uh, he's been outed as a horrendous, abusive husband. Um, in a very public divorce. Total piece of shit. Terry Billy Jean, thank you for the biddies. Off the bat, I'm gonna say he's doing a hype train incoming. I don't know what that means or how it works, but I'm very happy. Um, yeah, no, he's already just like two seconds in. I'm going to say what he's doing is his best Dane Cook impression right now. Obama in old will? That's racist. <laughs> oh, man, we got a good group. Glad to be here. Do we have anyone here who's uh, served in the United States military? Anyone here? By round of applause? Yeah, give them a round of applause. Let them be appreciated. Good. Army, Air Force, uh, Navy. Navy Corpsman? We got a Corpsman here? Good. Hello, Corpsman. Guten Tag, Corpsman. That's how you say it in Austrian, so. Uh, glad to be here. Folks, I gotta tell you, really, the only reason I'm here is because recently uh, a job application of mine was declined. Blue Sky, thank you for subbing. By Acorn, so. <laughs> to be fair, I did show up to the job interview dressed as a prostitute. Uh, okay. Already off the bat, we got a couple of Steven Crowder highlights. One, alluding to cross-dressing as comedy, which I, I don't like to prescribe anything to people, but Steven Crowder does it a lot. Like, the amount of times he's cross-dressed for a bit, you know, like, there's only so many times you can do it before you're just doing it because you want to, I feel. Um, even though he's not cross-dressing here, he's still making the joke. Like, like he's already pitch perfect for the room he's in. Uh, I think this is T-Con, is, is a tea party thing, given, again, time period. This is 2011, and uh, 
He's making acorn jokes. Is this, is this thing is it working? Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks for, you got my back. Appreciate it, Mr. Corpsman. Hurry, <laughs> God. It's all the same in Austria. And that's a disturbing trend. Dream catchers hanging from rear view mirrors in cars. You guys seen this? It's a Native American Indian contraption. Consists of wooden hoops and feathers. Supposed to help you uh, sleep soundly. <laughs> Why the heck would you need a dream catcher in your car? I mean, it's one thing to fall asleep at the wheel, but to plan on it? Man, that... That voice thing he's doing is really, really already getting on my nerves. No, it, Valkyrie Astrid, that's, that's just, it's a common misconception that he's going with. It's, yeah. Yeah, no, like, he really, like, the more, I listened to a lot of Dane Cook growing up, which, give me a break, I was, you know, I was in middle school when I, when I thought Dane Cook was funny. So, like, you know, that, that is the prime time for people to be like, yeah, Dane Cook. Uh, before you find other comedians that you're interested in. But, it, like, it really is uncanny how, if, you, if you're familiar with Dane Cook's, like, mannerisms, the way he, like, moves around the stage, if there's one thing I will say, and there's there's a lot to be said for if he's borrowed material from other people, and if the material is any good on its own, I don't think it is. I've tried to revisit a lot of Dane Cook's albums, and it's just like, eh, it's not for me. But he is very, especially if you see him live, he was super energetic at this point. Like, he was an electric comic to, to watch and see because he was all over the place. And Steven is very much doing an impression of him here. Back, three clean pairs of underwear. Uh, uh, two, actually, after I went through Spanish Harlem. Um, <laughs> I bumped into a guy there. He got mad. He's like, oh, <coughs> hey, man. Okay. I, take, I immediately take back everything I said. Everything I said. I'm just, we're going to look into the eye of the tiger there for a second, everybody. Like, I'm, like, this is, this is the face he's bringing first line into his racial impression. Um, I take it all back. I take it all back. I take it all back. Oh, do you think you are, okay? Oh, I know you can. I know how your people treat my people. I'm like, whoa, man, I'm from... He just went for Tony Montana just right off the bat. Wow. Canada? <laughs> we don't even have your people, okay? <laughs> Cause you got there are no Latinos in Canada, apparently. Guys got some thugs here in the States, right? I know. I watch MTV. <laughs> the worst part is, though, I don't know if you've noticed this trend in these rap videos. These gangsters all wear earrings. But that's not intimidating. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, dog, what's going on, bro? I gotta tell you I am. Uh, him, just like Matt Walsh around this time, very big on their, like, black man impressions. Uh, and Crowder still does it today on his show, by the way. I want... What what are the high-low bets? Do we want to place any bets in chat about if he's going to make fun of uh, gangsters who don't wear belts with their pants or have their pants sacking around their bucks? Because right now, it, he has a lot of, like, boomer core, like, white grandpa shit to say. Um, I like your earrings. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They're 14 carats. They were super expensive. <laughs> But you know, I just had to splurge, right? They match perfect with my clock. <laughs> of course, I grew up in a high school, which was large. Okay, so that joke, obviously, it was it was somebody talking to the the tough ideal of like a a, a you know mid two thousands gangster, like a, a fifty cent type is is what I think he's going for here. Again, there's a way that I think that joke could have actually been funny, because he's like, oh my gosh, I like your earrings, and immediately. He turns on a gay stereotype, which the conservative crowd eats up, of course. What would have been way fucking funnier is if he kept the tough guy act up and said all the same shit. He said, talking about it, getting it matching, and there was a sale, and I had to splurge, and it goes with my Glock. Like, that would have been way funnier, but he doesn't, because Steven Crowder only goes for the low-hanging fruit. Actually, uh, Middle Eastern 
So you get these Middle Eastern wannabe thugs. Ooh, mock and bite. I will have to try that at some point. <laughs> You're nice people, but you can't pull off the thug look. Like, oh, 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 you know what? I am going to mess you up. Hardcore. <laughs> hey, check out the German white boy. I want my nut on the left side. Yes, that's the crit side. <laughs> They're cruising down the street for chicks like... <laughs> <laughs> comment at Media Matters. <laughs> yeah, as many people in chat have already noticed, um, he's conflating Middle Eastern with Indian. Very clearly, he's just putting on a racist Indian accent um, and making fun of Indian music. Not that his audience cares, because again, we're, we're talking about Tea Party conservatives. And, and I do want to stress that like, at the time, whether this was in 2009 or 2011, whatever we decided, this kind of humor was a lot more in vogue. Like, I, I think a lot of people forget how big of a career Jeff Dunham fucking made on Ahmed the Dead Terrorist. Like, everybody knew fucking that dumbass racist puppet. Like, it, it was massive at the time. Middle Eastern racism was so prevalent in the decade after 9-11, I feel like we're almost just getting away from it in comedy. Um, so, like, I, I don't want to say, because the, the person who wrote this or who uploaded this hilarious and politically incorrect set, it's like, yeah, it's politically incorrect, but it's more offensive because it's just lazy. Like, because this is the shit that everybody was doing at the time. There was nothing new or groundbreaking here. And the people can disagree with us and they're not necessarily dumb they're just misguided but joy behar is so mind-numbingly stupid <laughs> that you could be sitting across from her talking with her and not even having the same conversation <laughs> well miss behar i think this debt is getting out of control i don't think that we should be passing it down to our children i know when my ex-husband never used to wash his feet <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that, you know, we're passing a debt down onto our children that they can- And I know I love blueberry pancakes! <laughs> right? Should you seek counseling? <laughs> we had, uh, the CNN Tea Party coverage. I remember that when the first time it happened. Remember that lady reporter? She was talking back to Anderson Cooper. She's at the Tea Party. She's like, Anderson, I'm here at the first Tea Party gathering, but I don't really think this is family viewing! Like a guy with his kid on his shoulders behind her. She's like, this is getting out of control! <laughs> He's like, miss, we're just here to protest higher taxes. She's like, I don't fuck you, Anderson! Anderson, back to you so you can tell more vulgar teabagging jokes! <laughs> but she likes, you know. Oh, no. Cute little... Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anderson, next stop, Chaz Bono. That's kind of the... No, oh, stop it. You know the scale. Oh, uh, I remember Bill Maher reason was on there. You're going to hate this next bit. Bill Maher talking about the tea party. I remember he goes, what I don't understand is what... Jesus Christ. Like, he just, he puts these extra affects on everything to, like, spruce up the bits because they can't stand on their own. They don't, they're, they're nothing. Like, he's literally just calling people stupid and then doing a funny voice. Like, that's all he fucking has. But, like, Bill Maher? Like, this is extra, not funny in the way he intends it, but it's funny to look back on this. Knowing what a, like, reactionary shithead Bill Maher actually is. He's, it's, it's supposed to be a gay thing. Like, it's, he's doing, like, a hoity-toity, like, impression. Why these teabaggers are so angry. <laughs> <laughs> and so throwing up his dainty little hands makes him funnier, right? I'm like, really, dude? You're That's what you're doing. The entire group of people is nothing more than a vulgar sexual innuendo, and you wonder why they're upset? 
That'd be like Robert Byrd tossing on his hood outside of 60s civil rights protests, yelling, what's eating the blacks? <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, is that? Uh, I don't think the rules apply to a Klansman. I don't know. Oh, man. I do, though, the Tea Party. I gotta say, you know, I was there for the first Tea Parties. Do we have any people here who, who have helped organize them over the a round of applause? Folks, give them a round of applause. That's amazing what they do. Is it? Is it? Is it? Only, you are the only group of protesters who leave a place actually cleaner than you found it. That is not fucking true. I once was at a tea party where there was some mild trash left over, and the members were actually walking around picking it up with pokey sticks. And MSNBC is like, they're trying to stab African Americans with pokey sticks! Worst person in the world. Oh, oh. And Rachel Maddow just comes up like, I agree with you, Keith. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't like getting my news from a lady who sounds like Seth Rogen. Okay, it doesn't work. <laughs> Certainly a lot better than that uh, Wall Street protest we have going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> you seen this group of hipsters down there on Wall Street? They were, they were really excited that Radiohead was coming down to play for them, and Radiohead showed up. They just went in to check their portfolios. So, <laughs> I actually saw an interview on CNN. The guy goes, well, listen, you know, we're going to have a meeting here, Brett, and then we're going to determine what our official message is. Yeah. yeah, okay, I can take a guess. You hate Wall Street, but you love them, right? Oh, you love them. Did we lose? Did we? <laughs> I hate the bank. <laughs> Oh, there we go. You hate the banks. Okay. No withdrawals for you. Yeah, the Wall Street Party. Yeah, you have yeah, yeah, all these guys, you know what I'm talking about? When you go to college, they're part of the marijuana party, but they don't really... I don't... I don't have it in me to do t part two right now. This, this one was taken in my very hometown, in the Spokane Comedy Club. And this is one of the only pieces of J.P. Sears stand-up I can find. And I want to give a warning for transphobia. <laughs> Not him. Oh, my algorithm, Stitch, my algorithm has been ruined. J.P. Sears Little Nido is, um... You know, we'll see in a second. I'll, I'll play some of his other content, because he, he fashions himself a comedian. I was mercifully when he came into town, and I want to hear. I need to to properly explain how popular he was, because when I had Gabriel Iglesias, who sold out stadiums, and on his current tour, the one that he he just came through a couple months ago, our town, he wanted to stop doing stadiums and start doing smaller clubs again, which is unheard of. But Gabriel Iglesias, whatever you think of him, big name, huge name in comedy. Sold out shows all weekend. We added extra shows, right? Big name. Huge name. J.P. Sears, a person who, like in the chat, a lot of people do not know who he is, but conservatives do. Not only did we add multiple shows, because usually what, how they do it is two shows Friday for big, big name comics, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. They added an extra show Friday, an extra show Saturday, and two shows on Sunday, which is the only time. I have had big names we helped. Sam Marill, Anthony Jeselnik, Gabriel Iglesias. None of them fucking sold out like this motherfucker. And graciously, mercifully, I completely missed him. J.P. Sears, sold out, sold out, sold out. Cannot, cannot express enough because... People, conservatives especially, are hungry. And we are also, regrettably, the only big comedy club within driving distance of the Idaho border. So a shit ton of people come over there from there. Because J.P. Sears is a grifter, let's make no mistake about it, he only has his stand-up comedy special available through... What the fuck is... It's, it's the name of a, one of those services that people pay for. But I could only buy it for $20, which I am not paying $20 to see J.P. Sears. But I will, for everybody here, I will play this transphobic rant he did at the Spokane Comedy Club, which uh, did lead to, because he had been there, this wasn't when he came through a couple months ago, this was last year. 
uh, when he, he came through the same club. And Among Us employees, which I was one at the time, it uh, caused a lot of strife because there were a number of queer and trans people who were like, I don't fucking want to work with this guy. I don't want to serve this crowd because this is the kind of shit he says. Let's get into it. Well, let me tell you the top story you missed from these games. There's a transgender athlete proved to compete in women's weightlifting. I thought, well, that sounds interesting. I looked into it. Turns out this is a biological man, born as a man, lived as a man for the first 35 years of his life, then decides, I'm a woman now. Hey, boxing cat. And then he's approved to compete in women's weightlifting. Did a little more digging. Turns out men can have up to 18 times more testosterone naturally occurring in their bodies than women. It's the primary hormone responsible for muscle growth, strength, and bone density. Kinda helpful for weightlifting. <laughs> also, a majority of sports bodies require a minimum amount of hormone replacement therapy. A couple of those hormones reduce the amount of testosterone in your body. They completely crater it, actually. Especially uh, spironolactone and the other one I'm always forgetting. Oh, don't worry, Crunchy Whiskers, we're getting to that. Hash Breather, thank you very much for subscribing. Oh. This person had a lot more of that hormone in their system for 35 years. And they were proved to compete with women's weightlifting. Yes, it does, Amaze. No. no. I didn't think it was fair either, but I liked it. <laughs> right? I, I can relate to this person. I like sports. I like competing. I'm not a good enough athlete to be competitive in men's sports, though. So. <laughs> but unlike this person, competing in women's sports? <laughs> no, thank you. Still too competitive for me. <laughs> so, what I want to start doing is identifying as a kid and start playing peewee football. <laughs> right? <laughs> Little linebacker, breaking collarbones every play. Seconds, there's another kid running to the sideline with a clavicle sticking through his fucking neck. <laughs> Fuck off! It's who I really am. <laughs> I need a safe space to be dangerous. Of course, the joke here being that men who transition uh, and trans women athletes are one in the same, and that any trans woman athlete is essentially just a, a, the same like bulky, muscular, raging ball of hormones and testosterone that like makes up you know the the wrestlers of the WWE, which is bullshit it's it's just not true it has never borne itself out he's also tying into fears of how uh, men who just aren't good enough at sports transition so that they can beat women which again is not true does not bear itself out in the numerous examples we have in the real world however it is enough of fear-mongering to get his audience to latch on to this bullshit and latch on they do see you in your restroom <laughs> I imagine some of the parents might get angry at me, though. Like, sir, what are you doing? This is a league for 11 and 12-year-olds. Yeah, I'm only 10. <laughs> but thanks for letting me know. I thought I was being oppressed by all these older kids. <laughs> Can we get some smaller children out here for me to kick this shit out of, please? Help me be myself. They're like, why would we do that? Because your objective reality should be based on my imagination, or else I'll get angry, so I'm right. <laughs> Again, remember what I was talking about earlier, where, where even the idea of making fun of pronouns or trans people, it gets, and I, when I, I can't tell if this, if people are doing a standing ovation, but I have seen so many times comedians just come and say, 
the most basic boring shit about how like, oh, you know, they're just jokes. People shouldn't be so offended to standing ovations of chuds, like standing ovations because they see people like this with this lazy hack shit as brave. They think that seriously out, outside of the walls of the, com- the the sanctum of comedy, people like this will be canceled for, for speaking up so bravely. The reality is that this is just fucking lazy. This is just boring. Like he's not really making any jokes. He's just demeaning other people. And in the process, also reaffirming their worldview. This is, it, this is a big problem with a lot of comedy when people resort to saying, oh, it's just jokes. Don't get so offended. It's like, yeah, it's just jokes. But if you aren't clear on the jokes and you are drawing conclusions about people in your jokes, especially using stereotypes, what you are actually doing is reaffirming those stereotypes. You're not doing anything brave or interesting. You're not poking and prodding at those stereotypes or, or you know, questioning the bigger picture. And most importantly, something I always love in good comedy, I always try to do with comedy, is you are not leaving people with something to think about, something that challenges their assumptions. You are just reaffirming the biases that you have and that they walked into the room for. And that's all these people are here for. You hear it in the cheers. Not a very politically correct point, but it's accurate as fuck. And each time I think about this, I imagine it takes a little something out of the coach each time he sees me walking up to the game and when he's just got to deal with it. Oh, hey there, sport. Still going with this shit, man. No, they died of old age. (laughs) He died like 15 years ago. I was just like, you're 10. And that doesn't add up. Yeah, no, awkward. This bit goes on way too long. I talked to everyone, but the, the punchline there was math is racist because he's again, I this entire thing is a false equivalency that is obviously targeting trans people, but he can't actually make the trans person the main character of the joke. It has to be somebody who is who identifies as a different age. Miki Pretty, thank you very much for following. Because if he did, he would actually have to base it more in reality. Like, there aren't people out there trying to do this. But conservatives can spread fear about it, even through jokes. And they can all get together and laugh and, like I said, reaffirm the shit they believe. Oh no, uh, Mockingbird, you did not miss anything. (laughs) Building back better, right? (laughs) Just destroy objective truth with a lot of Marxism, call it something else, and, you know, see what happens. Now, again, it's really important. This last little bit is really important, so I'm going to reverse it because he just goes off on a tangent. Like, he he has this whole really tired, really long bit where he's pretending to be a different age to play peewee football or whatever the fuck so he can win because that's, to him, what trans people are doing. So false equivalency is not based in any kind of truth or reality, facts, logic, anything except personal feelings and being threatened. Now... Listen to the amount of fucking buzzwords he throws into this word salad at the end. Just destroy objective truth with a lot of Marxism, call it something else, and, you know, see what happens. Oh, on that topic, did y'all watch Dave Chappelle's new special on Netflix? I have a lot of controversy about it. I watch it, I loved it. I think Chappelle is truly the greatest of all time. He's not just a comedian anymore, he's a truth teller, he's helping enlighten society. People are trying to cancel him for his special. They're hating Dave Chappelle for being transphobic. Come on. Can't we just hate him for being black? <laughs> so the thing with J.P. Sears, let's, let's look up another, because J.P. Sears has made a killing. Thank you, three geese in the trench coat. He has 2.98, almost 3 million subscribers. 3 million subscribers. Um, Thought Slime did a really good breakdown of one of JP's videos, but like, 
There's JP makes Another so many life. videos. Maybe heaven. Um, maybe purgatory. Let's get maybe through this. These are the that flag. And much like, oh my goodness, the popping cat. Thank you so much, boxing cat. Um. Yeah, no, awkward. The the video thought slime looked at is is rough, rough. Um, the thing about JP Sears, thank you for the goat slap, uh, Juliana. I appreciate it. All of his videos reaffirm everything. He only makes videos in which conservatives are morally correct, and they're also stereotypical, but in a good, cool, folksy, down home kind of way. And Everybody he's arguing against is made to look like an objective idiot. They look uh, usually also played by him. They go on way too fucking long uh, for for the bits that he's the jokes that he's trying to make. Mm -mm. But we're let's let's watch this one and uh, then we'll move on to another. I have, I think I have one or two other conservative comedians. It represents freedom. I'm willing to die in the name of it because freedom is the very thing that makes life worth living. Uh, I hate it. It represents systemic racism and the oppression of all non-heteronormative cis white voices. I remember at the end of the last video where he was just starting to spout off. Very seriously, he was making a point, by the way. That wasn't a joke where he was talking about like, oh, we're just going to uh, mess up objective truth with Marxism. Those things have nothing to do with each other. And they, neither of them relate to his points that he was making about trans people. Just like that, he doesn't understand the arguments of people who would oppose him. So he just shuffles it all together with a bunch of buzzwords he heard other people use getting mad about something. Like, it's just like, like heteronormative and racist. He's tying together. But it's nonsense. Like, it's, it's just nonsense. That makes him look really cool and like smart and and metered, but the reality is is that he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's the dumb one here. I have children, and I work diligently to instill great values into them while treating all other people with kindness. I am bullshit. That is not what a lot of people were like back then. Bullshit. Bullshit man that other people that i don't like change and if they resist i treat them with ragefulness with because stereotyping people that you disagree with like this jp normal stuff definitely not definitely not mad at all very normal very calm jp is a very loving person look at this you don't you don't do this to somebody that you hate resist i treat them with ragefulness with the wars i fought in it's all been about preserving democracy i have put my life on the line fighting for it countries around the world that don't have free speech rights or freedom in general have communism instead of democracy <laughs> they want to spread their evil ways to the u.s i just think free the red scare was largely united states propaganda uh, because ideas about communism were actually very popular in America post-World War II and gaining ground. That's why we have things like One Nation Under God, because nationalism, it was decided, would unify us all. It's why the Red Menace was such a big thing. It's why McCarthyism was a thing. Like, the idea that everybody bought into it is, again, revisionist bullshit. Speech and freedom in general are very dangerous, and we'd be better off without them. I mean, I went over and fought in the war so my family and my country could know freedom. Because okay, let's, let's good see. Good or bad that happens to you. So work hard, do something that contributes to a better world around you, have a family, be in service to God, and take self responsibility. Go to college so you can learn to be an activist. Oh, and also demand that someone else pay for it. And then once you're out, don't work hard because that's just oppressive. That's why we need socialism. Do something to destroy the nuclear family, have a few abortions, be of service to the media, and always make sure to victimize yourself over things that have nothing to do with you. It is, again, it is fucking rich to, for him to cast trans people. 
as the ones victimizing them. I'm, I'm assuming he's trying to do a trans person. He could just be a regular blue-haired liberal. And he's trying to cast the people he disagrees with as the ones who feel victimized, who are, are trying to victimize themselves. When he's making so many videos that just depict him and the things that he loves as like right and, and forthright. Meanwhile, and under attack, by the way. Meanwhile, everything he makes about them, whether it's his stand-up, like being a, a grown adult who identifies as a child to, to beat little kids in football, or this, is just the lowest common denominator stereotypes about the people he disagrees with so that he can beat them easier in these fake debates he's having in his head. Like, this is... It's unbelievable. Like, the, the, the cognitive dissonance. Woo! And, like, Rob Schneider isn't, like, also very... I don't think he's funny. Um, but let's, let's see this one. Fauci the COVID fairy is the name of this bit. It looks like the Fed has just declared war on Americans again. Because if they force us into a digital dollar, that means no greenback. No, I don't want to click on it. I want to pause it, you stupid site. My, my daughter just lost her tooth, you know? And like the, she's six, you know, and the tooth fairy, you know, the tooth fairy gonna come, to, I lost my tooth, the tooth fairy coming, daddy. Tooth fairy. I'm gonna put it under my pillow, tooth fairy, give me money. My 10 year old, she's over, she's like, how long are we gonna have to put up with this shit? And I said, hey, come on, it's your sister. It's a beautiful thing. The idea that there's this entity, someone who does something really nice for you just because Something fell out of your head. Oh, yeah. Press record. These people, like, like again, conservatives, not all conservatives, but a majority of conservatives, they see comedy as, like, one of their last bastions, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming this. Because they think it's one of the only places where, like, free speech still exists, where they can go and have their uh, beliefs reaffirmed. And you, you get a lot of, like, conservative whinging. Matt Walsh does it all the time. Uh, about like the the media that we consume and and how everything is Hollywood and everything is trying to you know push this woke agenda and so when conservatives have a chance to go see somebody who they know will reaffirm the shit that they want in a entertainment setting they eat it up like I was talking about J P Sears sold out so much they added more shows at the club I worked at than Gabrielle Iglesias J P Sears the guy we just watched sold out more than Gabrielle you know. <laughs> It's just a nice thing to have in the universe. Let's keep that going as long as we can. Because it's nice to have something to believe in. This is not, it's not true, but you believe in it for as long as you can <laughs> until you find out it's just, you know, a lie. That's why Tony Fauci, he was like the COVID fairy. It's the COVID fairy. Remember in the beginning, listen, you don't have to wear a man. Again, barely a joke. Barely counts as a joke. Thank you, Nabel225, for following. Like, barely counts as a joke at all. He's just saying... Yeah, like, it's funnier if it's a political statement, I agree with, 100%. Uh, awkward. Part of it is also that conservatives have a lot of hang-ups about swearing in any content they think might be objectionable. Uh, so the only comedians that watch... Yeah. Well... And that goes both ways because a lot of conservatives are, you know, they want to be more edgy. Like JP Sears will say the F bomb on stage and stuff. Math, you may make it feel better if you wear a mask, but they don't really work. It may make you feel better, but you know, they don't actually work and prevent anything, you know. But we need to save the mask for like for the essential workers, because the virus can tell the difference between an essential worker and a piece of shit like you people. So you don't have to wear a mask. Two weeks later, everybody's got to wear a mask. I'm sorry, you do wear, just cover your face with anything. It doesn't matter. A tennis racket, a tennis shoe, put anything over your face. Your wife's panties, your wife's ass. Put, put something in front of your face. Just, I don't know how you strap your wife's ass to your face, but try, just do it, you know, do it. Anyway, but you only have to wear the mask and your wife's ass in your face until there's a vaccine. Once you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask anymore because you're protected. Because the thing about the whole theory of vaccinology is you can't give it, you can't get it, you're protected. That's what the vaccine is. So once you get the shot and you're fine, you this is a bit that he has undoubtedly prepared because he's he's going through it a mile a minute. But I do not think it's... I'm, I'm going to make a light prediction here. I don't think it's going to end with a good punchline. Like, it, it should be building up to a good punchline. If, if, if it's taking this long with this little laughter to accompany it, 
it should have a killer punchline. I don't think it will. You don't have to wear a mask anymore because you're protected. That's the whole thing about vaccinated. Once you're vaccinated, you don't have to worry anymore. You can't give it. You can't get it. Like, what? <laughs> okay, you can still get it. You can still get it. But here's the thing, though. You know, no, no. But you can only... Uh, we might need to have a booster. But a booster is not another shot. You already had the shot. A booster is just a booster. If it was a shot, we'd call it a shot. It's a booster, you know? The shot's a shot. A booster's like a... Dee -dee -dee -dee. You know, the shots are... Dee -dee 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 -dee. You know, but you know, they'd be perfectly fine. Once you get the booster, and then you're done. You know, you get the booster, you get the one shot, boom, and the booster, dee -dee -dee, and you're fine. Listen, you're protected. hundred percent. You can't give it, you can't get it. What's that? Okay, there's a rumor you may need two shots and two boosters. Okay, I admit it. It's a problem. I admit, it's not, I admit, I don't know how it happened, but it's a rumor. It may be true. I don't know, but you might need two shots and two boosters. But again, a boost is not a shot. You know, a shot's a shot. We, if, it was, if a booster was a shot, we'd tell you. It was a, but it's not. It's a, it's a booster. It's a booster. It's even funnier when they do it a second time. You can tell because less people laugh. Here comes the booster. It's not. It's a set. Oh no, like, Leo Fee, there is definitely a joke to be made about bad communication from governments. However, they turn, again, like, there's no nuance to the points they make. It's just, government wants us to get a shot, but then they came out and, and they, they iterated on what they were saying. So they were wrong to begin with, and why? Ah! Like, it's just, yeah, Renaru. They wear ignorance as a badge of honor. Yep. Anyway, two but then when you have it, you're completely protected. You can't give it, you can't get it from anybody. If you protect it, you get the two shots, the two but you can't give it, you get what? Okay, you can still get it, and you can still get it. Okay, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. But don't wait. But listen, if you got the two shots and the two boosters, and you give it to somebody, the guy's going to go, oh, well, at least he's got the two shots and the two boosters. Oh, oh, oh. You know. But if you don't, if you don't get the shots, if you don't get the boosters, and then you give it to somebody, the guy's going to go, oh, this guy, he's not buying into this bullshit. They, they didn't get the boosters. Fauci, the head of this... The head of the CDC, Walensky, and Joe Biden, they all got two shots, two boosters, and they still f got COVID. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we're real, very fortunate that we were boosted and uh, vaccinated. Four shots and you still get it? Yep. Four. Four. Four? <laughs> if I wear four condoms and I still get monkeypox, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> Who's making these condoms? By the way, if you, if you don't want to get monkeypox, don't put a mask over your face, put it over your ass, because that's how you get it. Can we stop lying about this stuff, finally? The Liberty Daily. The conservative alternative to the Drudge Report? Wow. The conservative alternative to the Drudge Report. Uh, for those who don't know, Drudge Report is is a super conservative publication uh yeah no like it's 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 just it's just fear-mongering like it's just the same shit over let's go into this nick DePaulo, who i i am not sure who this is but judging by this alone this uh this picture is very promising to me i'm very i'm very curious about it for 30 years, you may have been thinking it, but this gentleman's been saying it. Give it up for Nick DePaulo. Oh, we are already off to the races with, uh, he's he's brave because he'll say what nobody else will. I bet it's going to be some reductive shit. I bet it's going to be, remember everything we've talked about so far on the stream. Every every time, oh, you people get so offended and uh, uh, it's just a joke. Everybody's a snowflake. You can't say anything anymore. Comedy is dead. Yeah, he just speaks his mind. 1.8 million views. You can't say this stuff anymore. It's a beautiful place. It's the type of place where a senator would get assassinated in 1860s. <laughs> this is class, huh? This is Cahos. Miller light cans lined up by the fucking... <laughs> God bless it. Those are the working class people that I... Oh, yeah, no, the, the being canceled thing, Clint Eastwood, that, that's another thing is like... I'm trying to remember specific jokes, but that is something that people have, like, openly talked about. It's like, oh, I'll probably get canceled for this joke. Uh, I've seen that many, many times on stage, and it's always to, uh, to rock us plus. It's, it's the other thing is that, um, when people, you know, they'll, sometimes comedians will be like, okay, well, they'll, they'll tell a joke that might be a little bit randy, and then they'll, they'll switch and be like, 
Well, if that offended you, then you better get out now. Or, or well, if that offended you, you're going to hate this. And that doesn't matter what the next joke was. Just the idea of something, oh, it's, it's offensive. Like, that's, that's enough to get people on board. Doesn't matter what it's offensive to. It's just the idea that it's offensive. And, again, mostly... In in those circles, being offensive is being offensive to not, like, actual structures of power or, you know, society. It's just, like, trans people or black people. I'm a toxic white European. There's no respect for white European males anymore. I realized this. I was in Jersey last night working in Jersey. I had to get on the turnpike to come home. I had to go to the bathroom on the Jersey turnpike, so I pull into a rest area. What's the name of the rest area? The Vince Lombardi rest area. That's the best we can do for the greatest coach in the history of the NFL. Oh, this is boomer shit. Oh, whoa. Yeah, remember when I was remember when I was talking about how like a lot of comedians If you ever go to open mics, you will notice that a lot of starting comedians they make jokes about what they know. So you if you go to a lot of open mics, you will notice there are probably a lot of frat bros trying their hand for the very first time, they come up with a story that they think is funny, but it's completely unprepared. They don't have a proper punchline to it. It's usually scatological. It's either sex or shitting their pants, like no in between generally, because that's what they know. That's that, that's funny to them. They When they tell their friends, their friends laugh at it. So they think that is comedy. As you get these kind of successful older white male comedians, you begin to notice a trend in the stuff that they pick out about society to complain about. Again, it's what they know. It's the things that they are inconvenienced by, even minorly. Even the stuff they see on TV. It's the stuff that they like to bitch about. And naturally, their audience probably does too. Fucking white toxic males. Oh, how about Jesse Smollett? Is that feminine black toxic fucking femininity? What the... God, he is so angry. Like, he is... Jesus. Yeah, no, he is, like, just seething anger. Like, his face is turning into a tomato already. What a genius. You know why he did all that? He said he wasn't getting paid enough. $65,000 an episode. Well, it turns out, uh, after that hoax, they figured out in three seconds, you're a pretty shitty actor, I guess. Fucking... <laughs> Imagine a white guy trying to pull that off. A fucking reverse hate crime. I'd, I'd have to get two white bodybuilders from Sweden, put them in blackface. <laughs> fucking beat me up, make it look like it was two black guys, leave a pack of Newports next to me. <laughs> dump great Kool-Aid over my head. <laughs> That's, there's not even, that's not even a joke. That's just a racial stereotype. Like, there's, there's not even an attempt at a joke. It's just saying, oh, how do I make it look like black people are somewhere? A pack of Newports and grape Kool-Aid. <laughs> What's he gonna say next? Chicken and watermelon? Dude, where did you get your fucking racism from a minstrel show? Like, again, this isn't brave. It's not bold. It's old. It's tired. It's regressive. It's stupid. Like, this is the shit that when conservatives are like, oh, you, you, can't, you can't say anything anymore. It's like, what do you want to say? This is the shit they want to say. Like, this is what qualifies as a joke. It's just racism. It's just racism. Fucking hashtag me too. What a crock of shit, okay? Let's... <sighs> Again, I was I was with that movement for a few minutes. Then you took it way too far, like most you lesbians do. You what the fuck? Uh, yeah, no, like Blue Sky Dream. This would be way funny if he was like. There is a great bit to be made that could use his entire same joke structure and like even a lot of the same jokes to make fun of how lazy and hacky a lot of conservative comedians are how like he is just a rage machine but like as it is like it's it's just 
Go fucking crazy. Like, what the fu what? You know, like, what did lesbians have to do with that? I don't... You know what I learned from hashtag me too from the whole thing? Guys are just hornier than women. That's all I learned from that whole thing. I asked my wife, is that who's horny, men or women? My wife goes, that's oh, about even. And then I proceeded to tell her this story and she hasn't brought the subject up in about two years. And, uh, hey, guys are just horny. When I was 14 years old, going through puberty, I used to fuck my bed pillow until I came at least three times a week. <laughs> By the time Friday rolled around, it was like sleeping on a microwave oven. I couldn't tell. <laughs> Are there any statute of limitations on these um, hashtag me too? Guys are being sued for rape 25 years later. I'm in a case right now. A woman suing me, the case is 51 years old. She said I kept touching her tits and I'm like, yeah, it's called breastfeeding, mom. Get off the fucking, <laughs> let it go. But like Harvey Weinstein is a piece of shit. He should be in jail. He's a fucking legitimate rapist, in my opinion. Who, who is he gonna defend? Do we think he's gonna like defend Louis CK? Who's also a fucking creep and weirdo? Who, mind you, hasn't lost anything. He's doing shows again. Like, like that's the thing where so many comedians, Christy Elia, another fucking creep, predator, weirdo. So many comedians, got so uptight about Me Too because they're fucking predators or they're friends with predators. And they're like, oh, you can't, you can't cancel somebody. They're like, you can't take away their legacy and everything. It's like, fuck that. We still have, at, at the club I worked at, I'm not gonna say any names. At the club I worked at, there have been no less than two major name comedians who came through the club who did not have previous allegations against them who we were instructed by their agents and by club management, do not, under any circumstances, leave a female staff member alone with them. They didn't say why, but it's, you, you can kind of guess. Because it's a problem in comedy. Like, that is a true story. That is real fucking shit. Two comedians. Big names that came through sold out. It wasn't anybody else I've mentioned tonight, though. So, like, him downplaying this shit is so fucking sickening. Okay? But don't lump him in with my buddy Louie, who likes to whip his prick up. There we go. What did I say? What did I say? I don't miss. What did I say? Out next to the punch ball every few fucking weeks. I mean, come on, we've all done that, right, fellas? Sometimes you're out with a girl on a date, she's not picking up the vibe how much you like her. You have to give her a hint, you know? Fucking... What the fuck? One of those girls said she has post-traumatic stress syndrome from seeing Louie's dick. Oh really, that's the equivalent? Seeing a guy's cock is the equivalent of watching your buddy being blown up in fucking Iraq with an IED, you whore, really? Louie was my old roommate. I lived with him for a year and a half back in the 90s. I saw his dick maybe 12 times. I'd say four times consensually, to be honest with you. But, you know. You know, victim blaming, like, is, it's just victim these blaming. broads get on there fucking hype. I see Whoopi Goldberg talking about hashtag me too. What the fuck does she know about sexual harassment? <laughs> At what zoo? And of course, we're like he's already been super racist. It's not, I'm not going to call it a coincidence that the first time he literally dehumanizes somebody in this is a black woman. He's literally comparing her to an animal. You ever notice how he starts all subjects saying, fucking all this, this thing? Shit. They're trying to blame all this racism and sexism on fucking Trump. What a crock of shit. You know, I didn't like Trump as a TV personality, but I love him as a politician. <laughs> Okay. Fucking love him. They did everything they could to keep him from becoming president. Ooh, we have a videotape of Trump saying he likes to grab pussies. What, Hillary doesn't? <laughs> Where's that videotape with her face buried in a giant muff at Yale in 1976? Just a, look like a lion's mane. They didn't shave back then. It's, ah.
They did everything they could. He's a fucking bullshitter and he's a salesman, which is what the job calls for. This company's a corporation. You should have picked that up when he was running for president. He sounded just like a salesman. He was telling people what they wanted to hear. Uh, Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, what about your health care plan? Uh, we'll be the healthiest people alive. Next question, please. <laughs> we'll have white teeth. We'll be orange and tan. It'll be beautiful. It'll be beautiful. <laughs> Mr. Trump, what about your tax plan? Uh, there won't be any taxes. I'll pay you. Just fucking vote for me. I have to beat this fat bitch. Don't embarrass me up here, please. His Trump impression is fucking terrible. Terrible. Can like, he's not even trying. Weapons farting over there in section six. And <laughs> we have microphones everywhere. I can love him. And Hillary's still out there saying, well, I lost because of sexism. Well, there was other reasons. First of all, it wasn't sexism. You're a guy. How can you lose? Guy fucking... <laughs> guys hate guys. Is that sexism? What the fuck? Is he... What are the... Who wants to take bets on if he's going to say... Mm, yeah, no, his impressions are fucking bad. Um, who wants to take bets if he's going to call Michelle Obama a man? If all you want to have a politician is a silver tongue, then you must already have an ungodly amount of privilege. Yeah, like, like, what does it say that the, the like, you're just okay? Like, you are, you are not invested at all in the political structure of America because it doesn't fucking affect you. He's, he's a well-off middle-aged white dude. Looks like a fucking Kentucky Fried Dennis Hopper. But there were other things. She wasn't the healthiest candidate, right? There were little subtle hints that she wasn't very healthy, like a nine-inch shit stain in her pantsuit as she's gone up this stuff. <laughs> Remember her trying to get into that SUV? She's like the elephant man, you know? <laughs> I'm not an animal, I'm a human being. Hey, come here. This Secret Service, get in the truck, they can see your shit stain. Those are M&Ms, fuck you, those... I'm not an animal, I'm a human being, I... You're a thick ankle, dog face, lying whore is what you are. A money-grubbing, power-hungry... fucking lib who turned into a corporate shill. Donald Trump, definitely not a corporate shill, but also Lil Nido, Poop Hammer, we, we called it. We called it way earlier. I would love to wake up and find out she passed away in her sleep last night. I would be ecstatic. I would jerk off to the autopsy photos, okay? And it ain't because she's pretty. I'd be like, ah, oh, the wicked witch is dead. <laughs> there you go, Hillary. <laughs> You've probably never seen this before. <laughs> to your point, Fast Expanda, a four-year video has 1.8 million views on YouTube, which is not small. But barely anybody knows who this guy is, which is true, except for conservatives. Now, however, because he, he did sell out the show. Consider for a moment if any liberal comedian of any stripe with, with this kind of audience, with a full auditorium who filmed a special, if they made a joke about who, who would be the equivalent of this, would it be Trump or Melania, about jacking off to the autopsy photos? It would not be out of the conservative mind space for years. It would be the only thing they fucking talked about because they would make it like, oh, it's it's this, like, this is the conspiracy. This is what they want to do to all of us. But he's like just saying this shit. And you know what's not happening? He's not being canceled. He's not being fucking spoken against and he's not losing his job or whatever the fuck. He's just a comedian doing a shitty job and appealing to his base. Yeah, no, they're still mad at Kathy Griffin. Bill's downstairs, the cops are interviewing me. He's in a wife beater. I'll fuck him. I don't know what happened. I heard a big thump upstairs. She banged her head or some shit. I don't know what the fuck happened. I gotta go fucking fuck this IHOP wage in about 20 minutes. Can you clean this shit up? I gotta get, I gotta get out of here. And you young people, Bernie Sanders, you thought he was going to be your savior. The old Bernie Sanders, the old wrinkled Jew who... You guys thought you were going to... I'm talking about the young people, okay? You thought you were going to get free hand jobs, chocolate ice cream, red wagons, fucking... Just an old bit of Jew who couldn't make it. I like when Bernie talks. It's like he's writing an imaginary letter to Santa Claus. 
Do a Bernie impression. Do a Bernie impression, please. Oh, do a Bernie impression. I know a few girls got sexually harassed in my campaign a few years ago. They, they, their tits were grabbed in the shower and somebody finger popped somebody. I, I, I didn't know about it. I was out busy making the case. We'll try to do better. You fucking kids, get off my lawn. Somebody has a discerning eye for beautiful women who does the hiring at Fox, and I'm ruling out Shepard Smith. Uh, 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 uh. For those who don't know, Shepard Smith was an openly gay anchor who worked for Fox for many, many years. Uh, and this is just his impression of a gay person, I guess. I don't like Trump. He looks like a guy that used to beat me up. Ah. <laughs> okay, Sheppy. <laughs> it's very funny that he would try and make Shepard Smith look effeminate because Shepard Smith, like, was not at all effeminate. Like, he. For a little more than like, he just. Axon looks like a normal guy. Catch, it's just 327 square feet. So yeah, no, exactly. Rent a root. Like, you've probably seen this guy's face on TV dozens of times. Like, there's nothing about him that, like, screams that he's gay. Bailey likes living with less. Like, he just, he's just like a normal-ass news anchor. He is, like, what you picture when you picture a news anchor. So the idea that he's, like, trying to make him out to be, like, this, this stereotypical gay is, like, ridiculous. Oh, he has a show. Great. Let's uh let's hear his hot takes about Victoria's Secret. I'm sure it will be enlightening. Finally tonight, uh we could go with the Victoria's Secret High's first transgender model. That's terrific because, you know. They have a money problems, Victoria's Secret, because you know why? Because we have to include everybody fat plus. So this is actually very interesting when he doesn't have something pre-written out. Like he is, you, you can see him literally looking around his studio, trying to come up, trying to improv and come up with a joke on the fly. But I'm willing to bet that much like his comedy, it's just going to be him bitching viciously. Models and, and models from India with hair lips and shit, you know. God forbid the white man's fantasy of broads and panties and, and big, you know, stunning broads. Not the white man, every man, I should say. Uh, we can't. Yeah, that was a weird, uh, that was a weird slip there. The white man's fantasy. A little, uh, Freudian. Victoria's Secret High is, uh, this broad, uh, or guy. I don't know what to call it. I, I, I. Call it. You say so you dehumanize it. It. She's a woman. Trans woman are you sure you about go that? with what the people want that's how a free market works and grade a pussy has been you know for about a million years what's demanded grade a pussy god he really just doesn't like see women in terms of like having their own like like this is more of a news show and he's still trying he's doing the zoo crew thing because he obviously cannot he's unable to come up with good comedic material as riffing but like what a pile of shit. It is too bad that he's such models. a little bitch. Critics he can't admit that he finds the trans model hot. You are, the brand you're very right, Catra. Thank you. It's model roster lacks diversity. No, nobody fucking, what, eight people claim that? It's the only time I ever see guys happy is uh, Victoria. They find a magazine in the trash. Or... What are they talking about? Again, transgender, LGBT, you make up about 5% of the world population. Uh, he's like vision, like visibly uncomfortable at the idea that a trans woman would be found hot, like by by a wide variety of people. Like he's really uncomfortable uh, with this. Secrets have certainly suffered. Just a few months ago, the store announced it would close more than fifty stores due to declining sales. That and uh, thank you very much. I mute for the Mom. the biddies. This spring, Victoria's Secret also announced its annual fashion show will not be returning to the network television. Again, I'm sure there's enough demand for it, but again, that's misogynist and retrograde and, you know, just beautiful women in underwear and panties. 
Must be something wrong with you boys. Boys can't be boys anymore. That's the fucking message. Jesus Christ. Boys can't be boys after we just watched his, like, rape apology. Huh? Wow. Rich, anything you add? You're looking at me with a dumb look in your face. This better be good because it's the fucking end of the show. Go ahead. Suck the oh, air out gonna, of the room. You're going to. Okay. I was going to say, are they going to change it to Victor's secret? Is that what you're going to say, Rich? Yeah, this is what I'm going to say. You know, yeah, though, I, I do give it. I guess you do know your role here. Is the fucking the world knows you're the unfunniest man, and I think you relish. <laughs> do my best at it. <laughs> yeah. You, God, what a fucking prick! You don't have to try too hard. But he's a good guy. He's a fixer. Well, we need a mannequin's head to knock off. He knows whether. If I need my car, the oil changed. He's a fixer. Yeah, Nick break down, breaks down everything wrong. He didn't really. He just kind of bitched about it. Man. Woo! Okay, that has been our look at conservative comedy.